Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of Faking Star Wars Radio, the official podcast of FakingStarWars.net. This week, we are going to discuss a Star Wars poll from Willy Bobo, The Nerds Have Spoken. We'll also have an official Storm Duper review of The Last Jedi, and wait for it, an interview with acclaimed director George Lucas. We'll also be on the ground with an investigative report from a hospital ward full of victims who have just seen Star Wars The Last Jedi. My name is Storm Duper, and joining me is my co-host, IG69. Thank you, Storm Duper. Uh, This week's episode brought to you by Gino's Jedi Pizzeria, now featuring special Octo Green Cheese Pork Pepperoni Pizza. Mmm, good. next segment is called The Nerds Have Spoken. And today we have a poll from Willy Bobo. And if you'd like, you can follow him at Faking Star Wars on Twitter. IG, what's the poll for this week? Well, Storm Duper, the fans were asked, what did you use as a bathroom while watching Star Wars The Last Jedi? Well, IG, I can only speak for myself, but uh, in my case, I don't go. Uh, I have a perfect metabolism, and excretory functions are not something that I have to be concerned with. I can eat and drink as much as I want, never have to go. It's great. Well, that's good for you, Storm Duper. However, for the fans that have a wee issue, the options were a popcorn tub, a soda cup, pants, and the nerd next to me. The winner was, by a whopping 37%, the nerd next to me. Oh, that's a good choice. Popcorn tub and pants came tied for second at 25% each, and a soda cup at a measly 13%. Hmm. Which would you choose? Personally, uh, these guys are amateurs. Uh, I always wear a pair of Depends. Oh, okay. Well, that's interesting, because uh, actually, if you look very closely in The Last Jedi, John Boyega is also wearing a pair of Depends in most of the scenes that he shot. I believe that that was actually some sort of um, healing suit that was springing a leak uh, as he was walking down the hallway. Those are, that's like full body Depends. Well, but we actually did some investigation and some Photoshop work, and if you go onto our Twitter feed, uh, my Twitter feed at DuperStorm, you can actually see uh, some highlighted images where it's very clear. You can see the outline through his rebel pants of a pair of Depends. But the big question is, were they soiled? Ooh, that's something I can't answer. That's above my pay grade. This is IG69, here with famed creator of Star Wars, George Lucas. Today we'll be talking all things Star Wars, The Last Jedi. Say hi, George. Hi, everybody. It's really nice to be here. What was your original title for the Star Wars Episode Eight that you planned back in 1976? The original title back in 1976 was uh, Star Wars Episode Eight: The Last Jedi. Um, how does this movie, The Last Jedi, differ from your original version for Star Wars Episode Eight? Um... Well, uh, the main story characters were uh, a girl named Rey and Poe Dameron, and the evil leaders were Snoke, and Kylo Ren was also really important to the story. How is the Disney takeover of Star Wars um, affected you? I mean, if they're us- are, they- are they just using your scripts? Well, it's been very interesting. It's a little complicated. Would you like me to explain? Oh, please do. Well, uh, back in 19... 19- Uh, 76, I think it was. I'm sorry. Um, Yeah, 76 when I first originally conceived of Star Wars, and I wrote the scripts to nine movies. Um, And I produced the middle three because they were the most uh, interesting and the ones that I could do with the current technology available at the time. Uh, Then around 1995 or 6, there was an incident between me and Bob Iger. And as a result of that incident, uh, I had to agree to sell the rights to Star Wars to the Walt Disney Company. But part of the caveat of that agreement was that I would agree to appear as if I was directing three new Star Wars movies because Disney wanted my name on the movies. So we ended up with 
uh, episode one, two, and three, The Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, Revenge of the Sith. And I had to appear in documentaries, do some press screenings and things like that and junkets. But I actually had no creative input in those movies whatsoever. It was all Walt Disney. But once those movies bombed uh, and the Star Wars community came forward basically saying these are terrible movies, um, I was asked to come back in and do the directorial work for the sequel trilogy, Star Wars Episode Seven: The Force Awakens and Episode Eight: The Last Jedi. Wow. So, so what you're telling me, and and this is this is shocking. A you're, little bit. You are not. It is a little bit shocking. You are not responsible for ruining the first three Star Wars episodes. In fact, it was Disney. Yes. Who used your name? And ruined Star Wars, and then they brought you back because now you can save Star Wars, but their name is still must on be the used property yeah. because your name got ruined. That's right. So now they use their name and your ideas. Yeah, it's it's kind of funny. They used my name to make terrible Star Wars movies, and now they're not using my name, and we're making the movies that I want to make. Wow, my mind is literally blown. Yeah, well, mine, how do you think I feel? I've been sitting here with a mo- blown mind for 15, 20 years now on this. What inspired you to uh, make the porks? Well, I've always been a fan of uh, aviary species in general. And uh, the porgs were kind of a hybrid of uh, my first child and just the idea of um, kind of like a cabbage patch kid. Uh, they were always very popular in the 80s, and I just thought, well, why don't we just tr- put the two together and put some wings on it? It'll be great. Now, something I know the fans are all very excited about, uh, in an, in A New Hope, yeah. Luke had blue milk. Now, in The Last Jedi, Luke has green milk. Mm-hmm. What other colors of milk are you considering using in future Star Wars films? Well, the green milk was to be sort of a symbolic referent to the island as a place of repose and, uh, and relaxation and spiritual well-being. And so the color of the milk in the next movie will really depend upon the dramatic energy and the theme that we're trying to put out there. But I would put some money on purple if I were you. Well, would that be like symbolic of Mace Windu's lightsaber? Well, again, I, I'm uh, not going to... You had nothing to do with that. Yeah, right, right, right. I had okay. nothing to do with that, uh, you know. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's just it's just instinctual. Samuel L. Jackson and I are not on speaking terms. I mean, basically, uh, with a few exceptions, most of the actors and talent that agreed to take part in that giant conspiracy, I don't want to have anything to do with. All right. Um, okay, uh, one, one more question. Uh, I know we're sure. running out of time, but I think I have time for one more. Um what are you going to do uh, with Force Ghost Luke? Will he be haunting Rey or Kylo? Well, that's something that the fans are really wanting to know. I was thinking probably I would just give him a lightsaber, you know, because uh, you know everybody wants to see Luke fight again as a Force Ghost, and that's something we've never seen before in a Star Wars movie as a Force Ghost fighting with a lightsaber. And I think actually, you know, we may we, we may go ahead and give him two lightsabers. Uh, one blue one, one green one, and I might possibly give him Star Wars uh, lightsaber earrings because we've never seen that either, and I think that would be a really good way of getting the fans involved. And everyone wants to see that, and every frame would be so dense, it would be amazing. It would be just like- well, you know, IG, when I'm watching Star Wars, um, there's nothing I like better than a snack or something. How about you? Oh, man, me too. What's your favorite Star Wars snack? Ooh, it's got to be pizza. Yeah, me too. There is nothing better than sitting down with a piping hot pizza and turning on the latest Star Wars movie. Now, when I'm getting that itch and feeling that hunger for pizza, there's nothing better than Gino's Jedi Pizzeria. Yeah? Uh, I agree with you there, Stormtrooper. Yeah. Ah, Gino's a Jedi Pizzeria, direct to you from Akito. Now featuring organic, unpasteurized, space amenity, booby milk cheese with delicious porg pepperoni. Delivery in the 12 parsecs or less, or Republican credits back. Offer not valid on Tatooine. What time is it, Storm Duper? <laughs> it's time for some listener mail. Uh, Faking Star Wars listener mail. 
You may have heard that there are some people uh, who watch Star Wars movies who like to discuss and speculate and sometimes even find fault. That makes me uh, almost physically ill to think of that. Well, we have a wealth of comments and tweets and emails that we've received in reaction to Star Wars The Last Jedi. So let's get at it. Our first message here comes from a Twitter user, Heath D. Williams. And Heath asks, Faking Star Wars Radio. I watched the movie and I really liked most of it, but I didn't understand the scene with BB-8. How is it that BB-8 can hold coins from the casino inside of himself when he's a droid full of many circuits and mechanisms, and then he shoots the coins out of his slot? How is it possible that the coins don't get stuck or jammed inside of him? I don't understand this. Can you please help me? Well, I understand that, and the first time I saw that, it ruined the movie for me as well. Um, That's why I researched this, and I've got the schematics. So, uh, it turns out, the BB-8's original function, the, the design of this droid, was to be a slot machine. Really? Yes. Oh, wow. That's a great backstory. Is that going to come out in like a comic book maybe or something? I believe it will be expanded in its own standalone movie. Wow. Yes. BB Casino Royale. Ooh, yeah. Uh, it has not yet been titled. However, um, the original BB-8 units uh, have a coin slot in them um, because you have to put the coin in to activate the unit. Then the unit will spin its top around, and if the correct symbols align, you get a payout. Oh, okay. So it's a little bit like a slot machine, yeah. but oh, that's so Obviously, he's had some mod to be able to project the uh, coins with that amount of force, but I mean, hey, it's a movie. Huh. Well, it seems like they should have used that as their idea for the uh, Battlestar 2 game because, you know, as you know, EA has all the has come into all the uh, problems with it being like a pay-to-play scheme or whatever with gambling. So I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, EA would never do that. EA would never be greedy. They're, they're, they're such kind and loving people. I thought they just want people to enjoy things. Right. I mean, they, they made a Star Wars game because of their love of Star Wars. Right. Just like most fans make Star Wars websites for their love of Star Wars, right? Oh, indeed. Indeed. Yeah. Not for self-aggrandizement at all. No, 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 never. We'd never do that. Okay, uh, here's another letter. This one comes to us from also a Twitter user, resist underscore Disney. And he writes, I couldn't stand The Last Jedi. I absolutely hated it. I brought all 12 of my children there, and there was nudity in the movie. Well... Hmm. Yes, there was, and quite frankly, I found it disturbing as well, Stormtrooper. It gave me a really terrible taste in the back of my mouth. Oh, I mean, <laughs> those porks were not even clothed a bit. Put put at least some shorts on them. I, I mean, mean, really, like a li- maybe in like a little beanie hat or something like that. We I mean, don't need to see what a porg is packing. No, I mean, you know, this it's movie, a, it's a child's movie, right? This, these movies are for children. So, yeah, I mean. Uh, well, sh- shame on you, Disney. Shame I on mean, uh, the scene when Luke is milking um, that manatee creature. Oh, my God. So pornographic. Yeah. I, I, I was really ashamed. I looked around at the theater. I was kind of afraid that I might be, you know, in a theater with a bunch of perverts or something. I mean, who uh, who knows? Yeah. At that point, you don't even know what movie you're watching. Yeah. Yeah. It was shocking. Absolutely shocking. And so, yeah, it kind of makes me think that all the rumors are true about Disney and, you know, the sexual underground. Oh, that. well, I mean, come on. If you've ever watched The Lion King, you, you know what they're about. Yeah, yeah. It's sad but true. So, yeah, resist Disney. Sorry, all we can do is agree with you. Yeah. Every yeah. single word. Valid point. That you've ever said, actually. All right, and yeah. one more. We've got time for one more letter. This one comes from uh, another Twitter user. I, hard to pronounce this name here. Uh, at... Pay Pablo Hidalgo. Pay Pablo Pablo Hidalgo. I'm. I think it's a French name. It must be. Yeah, or uh, possibly Mexican. And he writes, um, "This is the worst Star Wars movie I've ever seen. I was promised a movie that would be a serious expansion of the Star Wars universe. I want something with no humor, just like the prequels." Oh. Interesting. What do you think about that, IG? Well, I, I do agree that the prequels were not funny. Um, but I thought the comedy uh, added a nice light touch to this movie. Um, I, I thought it gave it, um, oh, I don't know, a depth of humanity, if you will. Yeah. I, I, you know, honestly, to me, the humor was just a part of the movie. I, 
I guess I th- I thought the movie was to entertain me, um, and I well, Star Wars paid isn't really to, to be enter- entertain you. It's to instruct and inform you on how you should live your life and um, all that is expected of a human being. Ah, right. I forgot. I don't know what I was thinking. So yeah, I guess in that sense, we would also tend to agree there that the the humor was totally out of place. It it, it might have been, but you know, uh, in a movie of that length, to not have any humor, I think. Uh, just would have been hard for the uh, kids to sit through. I'm going to push back, IG. I think you need to toe a line and have some ideals. I mean, I think I'm I'm willing to say that if you enjoyed this movie, it's proof that you are not a true Star Wars fan and well, that you don't know what Star Wars actually means. We, we all agree that, I mean, the prequels really set the bar for Star Wars. Uh, and, you know, having a humorless movie, um, I think... You know, maybe it was more in keeping with the ideals of the true vision of Star Wars as um, presented by George Lucas. However, um, you know, new director, new time. Maybe maybe it's time to lighten up a little. Hmm. Faking Star Wars Listener Mail. Well, that's been Listener Mail. As always, I'm Storm Duper, and this is IG69. And if you'd like to send us a message with any questions or reactions to the latest installment in the Star Wars saga, you can send me a tweet at DuperStorm or send Willy Bobo a tweet at Faking Star Wars on Twitter. We're here with an investigative report on site at the George Lucas Outreach Center for Traumatized Star Wars fans. I'm here interviewing Dr. Wilhelm Bobo Freud. Good evening, Dr. Bobo Freud. Welcome, Storm Dupa. Uh, Well, everybody wants to know what exactly is going on here in this ward at the hospital today. This ward contains various people who have been brought in who were traumatized by The Last Jedi. How many people have been coming in? Oh, hundreds, thousands. We're, we're packed. You're at capacity. Oh, beyond. All our listeners of Faking Star Wars Radio, they'd love to get to get into the hospital and talk to a few patients. Is that okay? Uh, absolutely. I think I will show you some of my more serious cases. Well, Dr. Wilhelm Bobo, uh, who is the first patient? Well, if you follow me, I will take you to patient number 3674. Patient 3674 is suffering from what I call Nerdenregen, which in English, I guess, would be nerd rage. That sounds really serious. It is very serious. It has ruined lives. Hmm. It, would you mind if I ask this patient a few questions? Oh, please do. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, how are you today? How do you think I am? Did you watch that movie? Oh my God! Well, oh my God! Wait, sir, sir, just just a moment. Uh, I'm just an interviewer. Uh, please don't attack me. I'm just I'm just curious. What what actually has been going on with you the last few days here? Well, all I remember was watching the movie, and then I saw red. I don't know what happened, but next thing I woke up in the police station. They said I was crazy. Are you saying before you saw it, you were perfectly normal and well adjusted? Absolutely. I think I was perfectly fine, despite what other people said. What's happened as a result of viewing it? It ruined my life. Are you going to spend the rest of your life here in the George Lucas Center? Uh, I don't know what other option I have. I clearly can't go outside or deal with other people or hold a job. Not that I had a job, but I certainly couldn't hold one now. So exactly what about the movie pushed you off the deep end? Everything. Everything. I mean, who is Ray? And what is Snoke? Where is he from? Why didn't they answer these questions? I, I mean, why has Luke been on Calm this down, island sir. all this time? I mean, just hiding? Is that it? I mean, what is he, Yoda? Uh, God, uh, where are the Knights of Ren? Why, why, what, why didn't they give me a lightsaber duel? I mean, and Luke, he just goes, Sir, put down the knife. And he's gone? What the? I, no, no, no. This can't happen to me. This can't happen to me. This can't doctor, happen. Doctor. No, doctor. no. Hurry. Doctor, is this man okay? Um, no, he is suffering from the Nerdenreigen. Uh, the, the orderlies will sedate him now. Oh, well, 
Doctor, do you have uh, another patient to show us? Uh, well, of course. Uh, we will take you to patient uh, 2371. It's not going to be like that other patient. Oh, no. Patient 2371 is much calmer. He suffers from a most curious syndrome. Uh, I call it total body porcmorphic syndrome. Well, I think I read about that in one of my introduction to psychology courses. I assure you, you haven't. Well, what does it mean? Well, it's a very new syndrome. It's only about one week old. <sighs> it is where one believes that one is a porg. <coughs> yes, it is the most annoying syndrome. <coughs> uh, it's probably best if we just move on. <coughs> oh, Lord. Uh, anyway, uh, moving on. Patient 1932 has simply lost the will to live. Oh, my goodness. Not that. Can we interview him? Um, of course you can try, but he is not very responsive. Uh, sir, excuse me, I'm Storm Duper from Faking Star Wars Radio. Um, our listening audience is just dying to know, why have you lost the will to live? Sir? Why have you lost the will to live? I'm sorry, Storm Duper, but he will not answer you. He has lost the will to live. No! He can't! No! Yes, and sadly, despite the millions of dollars of equipment all around him, there is nothing we can do. Well, thank you very much for your kind, kind uh, pleasantries and giving us the the inside look at the devastation caused by viewing the Last Jedi. It is. Uh, it's my pleasure. I like to, uh, you know, shed a spotlight upon these uh, very serious issues. Ah. <sighs> Sad times, Doctor. Uh, it just happens with every movie. Doctor, do you have any recommendations for patients uh, or for people who feel like they might be on the edge of experiencing that psychotic break from watching The Last Jedi? Maybe they're noticing some different symptoms, you know. Well, uh, so there is a place you can go for help. Of course, here at the George Lucas Outreach Center for Traumatized Star Wars Fans or FakingStarWarsNet.net. Ah, okay. Yeah, we do recommend that if you are having any kind of psychological trauma of any kind regarding uh, watching Star Wars The Last Jedi, please visit fakingstarwars.net or buy a t-shirt from us because our t-shirts are 100% cotton and will definitely soothe you in every way imaginable. Well, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. I'm here still with IG69, and it's my review, Storm Duper, on The Last Jedi. First of all, I just want to respond to a few things that we've been reading out there. Many people seem to feel that this film isn't Star Wars. It's not a true Star Wars film. Many other people, on the other side, have been complaining that this movie is really derivative, okay? Um... And so they're saying that there's nothing new, there's nothing special. I'm not sure why you're even arguing on these websites because it's pretty clear to me how you should come away from this film feeling in terms of the whole creative, new versus derivative debate. So would you say that this film is really different and new? Oh, yes, absolutely. Because, I mean, look at all the new fantastic things that were in it. It was, it was incredible. Well, would you say it's derivative? Yes, completely derivative. I hated it. I, there was nothing new in it. I mean, it was just basically the other movies mishmashed together. But I thought you said that it has some really original story structure and character arcs. Well, I was thinking it did. Yeah, it did. Uh, you know what? It was so original. I cannot get enough of the new ways that we saw the Force and the characters develop. It was amazing. But I also thought you said it was a derivative mess. Oh, man. Yeah, it was. I mean, it was it was basically piecemeal garbage from the original films. No creativity whatsoever. It was awful. Yeah. Um, so getting back into some real points here of contention, uh, one of my basic problems with the film was that it did contain nudity. Um, first of all, we saw Kylo Ren's torso. And I have to say, I brought my girlfriend to the theater, and uh, I felt a little uncomfortable after I got home. Uncomfortable or inadequate? A little bit of both, actually. Um, you know, Adam Driver is from the same hometown as me anyway, and so I already kind of viewed him as a bit of a threat. Um, but 
that was something that I wish I had known ahead of time before I brought my girlfriend to the movie theater. I didn't like that. Uh, another thing about this film is that it's all about failure. From the very beginning, it's all about people spending their entire lives and energy trying to do things. And in the end, they don't actually get to do what they want. And I don't know about you, but I spent enough time in my life doing things and trying to do things that I don't get to do. And then when I'm reminded of how inadequate and horrible I am on a screen, it just it doesn't inspire me to want to go do anything. I, I found it very upsetting, actually, to be reminded that sometimes life is hard. And um, and I don't want to I Just give me a moment. It was really upsetting to see people fail on screen. Um, another thing that we learned from this movie is that Star Wars is all about faking. From the very beginning, Poe Dameron fakes out General Hux. And in the very end, Luke Skywalker fakes out the entire cast of the movie when he comes as a force ghost to, up, to uh, upstage everyone. And I think that it's very clear. The message from Star Wars is very clear. If you're not faking it, what are you doing with yourself? Every major story beat, every character that has anything of value in this movie is faking it. So that was an encouraging message. I like that part. I'd like to read something from another viewer uh, because he has a really um, well thought out, interesting perspective on the movie. Um, I like the way he articulates it because there's a lot of balance in what he says and it allows you the fact to see that there's a lot of nuance to his perspective, okay? The original Star Wars films were about victorious hope, the unity binds us all, and overcoming the evil inside yourself. Luke Skywalker is the embodiment of a character archetype that is old as storytelling itself. He rises from nothing, pursues knowledge and enlightenment, overcomes despair, becomes a savior, and through courage and determination, redeems the sins of the ones who came before him. His purpose as a character and as an icon is to personify everything a human should hope to become. In The Last Jedi, Luke Skywalker tries to murder a child in his sleep, then cries in a cave for a few years while the world around him crumbles, then gets lectured by a teenager about responsibility, and then dies nonsensically. If you enjoyed The Last Jedi, you do not care about Star Wars. You don't care about the transcending, timeless power of stories and myths and archetypes. You're just a dog who drools when the bell rings. Star Wars and Luke Skywalker can't be tarnished by anyone. That story was already told, and at most is only one fleeting incarnation of one of humanity's oldest traditions. You can't crush that, but The Last Jedi tried. I really liked it. Okay, all right, yeah, yeah, that, that's kind of how I feel too. One more thing, IG, that I want to say is a lot of people have been talking about spoilers. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, I was thinking about going into like a restaurant, like a fast food restaurant, and sitting down and watching some people order a Big Mac or maybe a Whopper if you prefer, and watching them eat their sandwich watching their teeth pierce into the delicious flame-broiled meat and chew it up and move it around with their tongue and hear the saliva sloshing back and forth and swallowing it down. And just sitting there for hours and hours watching people eat hamburgers. And then when somebody tells them what the hamburger tastes like, freaking out about it. That is kind of how I feel with people who are complaining about spoilers because that's basically what's going on. The movie's already out. Right. That's my point. And it's been out for a week? Yeah. So and if you haven't seen it, get your butt to the theater. Yeah. and Because you, I mean, in the first few days, I, I agree. You know what? If, if maybe I just didn't have the time to go to opening night and I want to see it a day or two later... I don't need everyone telling me the ending. Right, but, but who's it's been, doing that? It's been a week. Who, who is telling the endings to movies? They're coming on Twitter 
and Facebook. We, we both know people who do that. Right. But nobody is coming up to me on the street, like with a megaphone, and shouting the spoilers of the end of The Last Jedi. The only way I'm getting them is if I am actually logging into Twitter, turning on my screen, turning on my phone, and going there. That's like that's what I'm saying. That's like going to a McDonald's, sitting there for three hours, watching people eat hamburgers, and then getting ticked off when people tell you how they taste. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I, I see your point. It's a long walk. Of yeah. Short beer, but yes, okay, I get it, I get it. So, so here's my point: if you haven't seen the movie yet, then it's your fault. You might have forgotten how to see the movie to avoid being spoiled. So, here's a helpful guide: one, go to a movie theater, buy a ticket, then walk into the theater and sit down. The next part involves waiting for a few minutes until the film actually begins. Make sure to keep your eyelids open, not closed so that the light from the screen can reach your retina. That way, you'll see the film and know what happens in it. It's available to watch in movie theaters. Movie theaters can be found in many city centers, malls, and municipalities. It costs about $10. Go see it. I'll send you some money if you can afford it. Just send me a tweet at Duperstorm. Well, IG, that's all for this week. Tell the listeners where they can find us. You can follow Faking Star Wars on Twitter and Instagram at at Faking Star Wars and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Real Faking Star Wars. If you'd like to submit a question for us on Twitter, use the hashtag FSW Radio and we may read it next week. You can get official Faking Star Wars t-shirts and other gear on tpublic.com slash user slash Faking Star Wars. And make sure to follow me on Twitter at DuperStorm. And you may not follow me at all, or I will press charges. However, don't forget to follow Faking Star Wars at FSW Radio on Twitter as well. If you like what you hear and want to support what we do, you can visit www.ko-fi.com slash Faking Star Wars and buy us a virtual coffee, which will help us fakers keep making the content that you love. If you don't want to do that, that's fine too. Just make sure we don't have your address. As always, stay tuned to FakingStarWars.net for quality Star Wars comedy, parody, and satire. And thanks to you and all our followers for listening. And of course, may the foe be with you. See you next time. Goodbye. Or whatever. <laughs>